Amen. Let's just say amen. Amen. I want to welcome you this uh, Sunday morning here at First Baptist Church on Gresham Road. Thank you all so much for joining us uh, here at First Baptist. Uh, you could be logged on anywhere else, but you decided to watch us this morning. Whether you're watching via Facebook Live or YouTube or Instagram, I want to welcome you to our worship celebration here at First Baptist on Gresham Road. Hope that each of you enjoy your, uh, your 4th of July and that you didn't eat too much and you had a good time with your family and friends and that you kept yourself safe, uh, properly social distancing and all that good stuff as well. But again, welcome. We thank God for each and every one of you this morning. We're so grateful this morning to have uh, our musicians and one of our very own sister, Jerry Thornton, who is going to lead us in a song. Let's receive Sister Thornton at this time. God bless you.
has smiled on me. I want to thank Sister Jerry Thornton for leading us in that wonderful song. Uh, we thank God, amen, for him smiling on us. And God has blessed us with a brand new day, so we're grateful to God for that. And again, we want to welcome each and every one of you. Listen, before we have a word from the Lord, I'm going to ask if you would to please bow for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We thank you for this day. We honor you for who you are, for being an awesome and a wonderful God. Father, we admit and confess our sins before you, uh, and they are many. We've done things we should not have, said things we should not have. And Father, we pray that you forgive us of all of our sins. And just as we're asking for forgiveness, we ask that also you help us to extend that forgiveness to somebody else. We thank you for this day, the day we've never seen before, and the day that we'll never see again. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to sit up in our beds, to uh, be able to listen to a, a worship celebration uh, in the comfort of our homes or wherever we might be. We thank you right now. And Father, now I pray that as the word goes forth, that you help me not to preach or teach with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. I pray that you speak directly to your people, that you give them a word that will be instant and in season. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you. So these are the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. 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 Thank you all so very much. And uh, very quickly, I'm going to ask if you would to turn with me to uh, the sixth chapter of the book of St. Matthew. Uh, that's Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 4. Matthew, the sixth chapter, uh, verses 1 through 4, should be showing up on your screen. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, um, and uh, we pray that you would read along with us. It will show up on your screen. And, uh, of course, hopefully, prayerfully, you have your Bibles with you or your cell phone or something where you are able to, to look at the Word for yourself. I always say, I always check the preacher out. Make sure that the preacher is preaching what the Word of God says. I want to thank also our musician, our minister of music, Brother Jimmy Aaron Owens. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do here at First Baptist. Thank you to uh, Brother Corey Collins. Thank you so much for uh, our filming. Thank you to Brother James Jones, Brenton Hayes, Brother Ronnie. Thank you so very much. And Norman Thomas III, we thank you all so much for making uh, our church visible uh, on, uh, on social media. Thank you all so much. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. Come on, let's read together. It says this, says this, says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose a reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. I'm going to read verse 1 one more time. Here's what it says. Matthew 6, chapter, verse 1, New Living Translation. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk very briefly from this subject, crowd pleasers. Crowd pleasers. I want to talk very briefly from the subject, crowd pleasers. And brothers and sisters, uh, as I read over these few verses of Scripture found in the sixth chapter of the book of St. Matthew, I thought about uh, how we live in a, uh, a world uh, that likes to publicize everything that we do. We like to, to put it out there. We like to show the world what's going on. Uh, in fact, uh, there, there's so much going on in the world right now uh, that we uh, have, have put you know, certain things out there that, that others can see uh, so that we can be admired by others. Well, Jesus here in the sixth chapter of, book of, book of the book of Matthew is warning. He gives, starts off Matthew 6 by saying, watch out. In other words, uh, he's giving a word of, of caution, a precautionary measure that is to be taken by believers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's given us a warning uh, to let us know we have to be very careful about what we do. We have to be careful about the motives behind what we're doing. Uh, Jesus had to warn his disciples that this is not about you. Whatever it is that you do, whatever good things that you do, yet you do, is not about you. It's not so that you can get a pat on the back. It's not so that people can recognize you. It's all about so that God 
can get the glory in our lives. And here it is, brothers and sisters, as we look at this sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, I'm reminded, I know some of you are real saved. You probably uh, have forgotten all the, 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 the music you used to listen to back in the day. Uh, you've erased all that rap music, and, 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 and you have totally uh, been renewed in your mind. But I believe that there may be five or six of us who may be listening today who remember a, a song written back in 1987 by two brothers from New York. Their names were Eric B. and Rakim. Some of y'all remember remember Eric B. and Rakim, but they had a song entitled Move the Crowd. And they talked about how they like to, uh, they, they, they receive energy from the, the crowd uh, that they, uh, when they played their music, when they began to rap, they, they, they received energy from the crowd and it motivated them to do more. Well, it, it can even be looked at now even as a preaching. Uh, sometimes we get our motivation from the crowd. Well, we don't have a crowd now. Here I am standing in an empty church, maybe two people, three people, four people here in the church, and there's no crowd to motivate me, but I simply have to preach the word of God. And that's why he tells us to preach the word, to be instant, in season, and out. There is no crowd to move. I don't know whether you're saying amen or you're in your house or not. I, I can't see the, uh, the, the, the notes that you write down at the bottom, the comments that you write underneath. I can't see anything that's going on. All I can do right now is preach the word of God and pray that the word will have its intended impact on your life as you sit there in your bed or you sit in that chair, wherever you might be. All I can do right now is preach the word of God. But God warns us. As I was uh, sulking and upset that I didn't have anybody to say amen because we get encouragement. Preachers get encouragement from folk uh, shouting amen and, and the feedback from the crowd and everybody uh, jumping up and hollering and saying, oh, you preach pastor and all that stuff. Well, nobody's here. And all I can do is preach the word of God. But God said, you're not doing it. You, you, in fact, if the only time you can preach, the only time you can sing, the only time you can do whatever it is that you're doing is when a crowd is there, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Come on, talk to me, Holy Spirit. If you're doing it simply for the crowd, if you're only, uh, uh, your fire is only ignited because there's a crowd there, there's something wrong with your intention. And God had to set me straight. You're not doing this for a crowd. You're not doing this for attention. You're not trying to put on a show. You are preaching the word so that somebody's life will be changed as a result of hearing God's word. This ain't your word, Pastor Thomas. This is God's word. So how, Lord? How do I, how do I avoid being a crowd pleaser? How do I avoid when, when, when everybody comes back to church, when everybody comes back to work, when everybody comes back uh, to, to see certain things, how do I avoid being a crowd pleaser? Listen, the uh, Bible teaches us here in, in Matthew 6 chapter four things that he wants us to know in order for us to avoid being a crowd pleaser. Number one, here it is. Here's what Jesus taught his disciples and the same thing he's sharing for all of us today. Number one, he said in order to avoid being a crowd pleaser, listen to what Jesus said. You may not hear it that way, but this is the way I heard. Number one, he said, I need you to refuse to post Post everything you do. I'm going to say it one more time. Refuse to post everything you do for people. I, I heard, hope you got that one. Write that down. Come on, Beta and Phyllis, Lynn. Right here it is. It says, in order to avoid being a crowd pleaser, you need to uh, refuse to post everything you do for people. Where you get that from, Pastor? Matthew 6, 1. It says this. Watch out. <clears throat> Don't do your deeds uh, good deeds publicly to be admired by others for you will lose the reward from your father in heaven. What do you mean? You, you put on here, refuse to post everything you do for people. Here, here it is, brothers and sisters. Uh, sometimes we get so caught up in our good deeds that we post all the stuff we do for people. In other words, we take pictures. If we give some money to the poor, guess what? We stand in there with our cameras in our hands, uh, handing the money to somebody who's homeless, giving them, giving them a, a, a reward. If we go grocery shopping for somebody in need, we take pictures of us handing them, uh, we take, do a video of us handing them the groceries that we get. I wish y'all were praying with me. We, uh, we publicize our good deeds. Why? Bible says because we want to be admired by others. We want everybody to see what we're doing be, because we're doing it for the wrong motive. 
Got to be careful. God says, watch out. Jesus said, watch out. You don't need to be publicizing everything, everything good that you do for people. You go to the hospital. There you are. Somebody just had surgery, and you got your camera out taking a selfie because you want everybody to know that you went to visit somebody in the hospital. I wish y'all were praying with me. They hair ain't done. Uh, they, they, they don't even have their teeth in. None of that. And you want to take a selfie with them to show the world that you went to visit somebody at the hospital. God says, shame on you. That is not why you go visit somebody. That is not why you, uh, you, you feed the homeless. That is not why you take care of the needs who, of somebody who may be in need. That's not why you do it. You do it because you love God. You do it because the Spirit has inspired you to do it, not so that you can gain notoriety for yourself. I know people right now, they got a little money in their pocket. Every time they, they let somebody borrow some money, they publicize it. I let so-and-so borrow some money. I had to take care of so-and-so. I let somebody stay in my house. That is not for the public to see. If you do it, and if you're doing it for the right intention, God says, I need you to keep your mouth closed. Well, why, Jesus? Jesus said it right here. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others. Why? For you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. I said, you're going to lose your reward. If you're doing it just so you can be, get, get publicity, Brother Ben, guess what? You're going to lose the reward that God has for you. Number one, in order to avoid being a crowd pleaser, number one, you need to refuse to post everything you do for people. Here's number two. Watch this one. Here it is. Watch this, Lynn. Number two, you need to remember that you are not a politician for God. I said, number two, you need to remember that you're not a politician for God. You may hold the office in the world as being a politician, but you do not need to be a politician for God. You're not out here politicking. What's a politician? Somebody who serves in a public office, who does things, uh, recognizing that what they do and what they do publicly will earn them votes and notoriety. Are y'all praying with me? Here it is. Matthew 6, 2 says this. It says, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and, and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. It says, I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. In other words, he says, listen, uh, Jesus is talking here. He says, when you do things don't make a whole bunch of noise while you're doing it. Don't call attention to yourself. Don't, don't wave your hand as you walk around and give your offering. You're holding your money up to show everybody how much money you put in the offering plate. Uh, you show how much you give to so-and-so. You got a record of all the stuff you've done for people to just to throw it up in their face. He said, you are not a politician. You can't earn votes from God. Let me tell you why you can't earn votes from God. Because God already knows your heart. And some of the good things you do, we do them for the wrong reason. And God said, you don't get any credit for that. Even when you do good things for the wrong reason, God says you do not get credit for it. Because your heart is not right. How, don't you know people who, will, uh, who will, will butter you up just so they can get something from you? They'll do nice things for you. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll give you compliments all because they have an underlying intention. They're trying to get something out of you. So they come and they look and seem as if they are, are genuine in their praise of you. But in actuality, they're looking for a trade-off. I wish y'all talked with me here. Hmm? They're trying to get something out of you. And, and, and game recognizes game. And see, see once you've been out there, you can recognize. If somebody's trying to play a game, run a game on you, you can recognize the game. And you see, now all you're doing is trying to get something out of me. So you recognize what people are doing. Jesus said, don't do as the hypocrites do. Blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. Hey, I'm giving so-and-so some money today. Hey, I took a bag of clothes over here to so-and-so. You got to let everybody know 
as if you can earn favor from God by bringing attention to the acts of charity that you give. God says, I'm sorry, but you don't earn votes from me. I look at your heart. I look at your, it, whether you have pure intentions or not, or whether you're just trying to, to get in good with somebody so you can move up on the corporate ladder. Uh, some of us, even on our jobs right now, the only reason that, you, that you, 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 you speak to your boss, the only reason that you speak to people on your job, the only reason that you buy somebody something is so you can get in a position where they can bless you. You ought to be shamed of yourself. God said, the reason I have not moved you up is because your heart is wicked. And until your heart gets right, you will remain where you are until God sees that you're doing what you do out of a pure heart. Number one, how do I avoid being a crowd, please? Here it is. Number one, I need to refuse to post everything I do. Here's number two, Brother Owens. I need to remember that I am not a politician for God. Not a politician. Brother Collins, B. Blanchard, here's number three. Here's number three. I need to resolve to bless people privately. Here it is, Ben. I need to resolve to bless people privately. Here it is, Brother James Jones. Matthew 6, chapter, verses 3 through 4a. New Living Translation. Here's what it says. But when you give to someone, he's giving a contrast. In other words, sometimes you give so that you can get publicity. You want to post everything. But here's what he says. He starts off with a, a contradiction, gives a contrast. He says, but when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Verse 4a says, give your gifts in private. Give it in private. Don't let everybody know what you're doing. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give quietly. Somebody needs something and you're in a position to let them have it. You don't need to publicize. He said give it to them privately. Hmm? Knowing that they may never be able uh, to let anybody know what you did for them, give it to them privately. Even if you, they, they can never pay you back or whether they can or cannot pay you back, you may never know. He says, give it to them privately. Don't look for a reward. And sometimes, listen, if you can't afford to give it, you shouldn't give it in the first place. If, you, if you're going to hound them about them paying you back, and, and my pastor would always tell me, Reverend H.F. Shepard would always say, you don't let people borrow something, uh, borrow things that you can't afford to let them have for good. Why? Because if you let them borrow it and they can't give it back, you're going to keep hounding them, and then you lose your witness. So you know what? I don't tell people, hey, if I let you borrow something, it, it's, it's not borrow. You can have it. Just take it. It's yours. Why? Because I don't know whether or not you can give it back to me or not. But what I have guaranteed I'm going to do, I can't give you something that I can't afford to lose. Be careful. The Bible says when you give to somebody, you don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. You give to them privately. Stop letting everybody know what you did for somebody else just to throw it up in their face later on. God says shame on you. Not shame on the person uh, that you gave to, but shame on you if you have to let everybody know what's, what you've done for somebody else. You are operating outside of the will of God. Here it is, Prophetess uh, Monique. Here it is. Number one. In order to avoid being a crowd, please, and number one, I need to refuse to post everything uh, that I do for people. Number two, I need to remember that I'm not a politician for God. Number three, I need to resolve to bless people privately. Here's number four, first lady. Here it is. In order for me to avoid being a crowd, please, and number four, I need to receive. Here, here's what God would do. If I do things his way, if I operate according to his will, if I, uh, I am able to give privately, here's what God says he would do for me, for you, for us. He says, if you do it privately, if you don't post everything, if you stop politicking, I wish y'all praying with me, if you give privately, 
he says, this is what you'll be able to do. Number four being, he says, you'll be able to receive your blessing publicly. Brother Collins, you'll be able to receive your blessing publicly. You can receive your blessing publicly, listen, if you refuse to post everything. If you remember that you are not politicking for Jesus. Number three, watch this, you resolve to bless people privately. He said, you know what I'll do for you? I'll allow you to receive your blessing publicly. Here's what he says in, in verse four. And I'm going to read from the King James Version because I like how the King James Version, uh, uh, I like how it reads because it, it, it emphasizes giving publicly. Uh, Matthew 6, 4, King James Version, it says, that thine alms may be in secret. <clears throat> Just read that. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee how? Openly. God says, if you give secretly, if you give with the right intention, if you give without letting everybody know what you've done for somebody, God said, I will give to you publicly. I will bless you in front of everybody. I will let the world see how awesome uh, uh, God is in you if you give things with the right heart and with the right mindset and with the right intention. He said, I'll bless you publicly. I'll bless you in front of your enemy. The very people who've been been setting you up for failure, I'm going to bless you in front of them. That's why David wrote in that 23rd Psalm, he said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know what? The things that I, I ignored on, on behalf of my enemy, uh, I ignored them privately. I didn't, I didn't go out there and put them on blast. I didn't talk about how they were doing me wrong. I didn't talk about all the stuff they were, they were trying to, 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 uh, to, to, uh, to sabotage my business. I didn't put that out there so everybody can see, name their names and put them out there. He said, as a result of that, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you publicly. I'm going to reward you in front of the very people who tried to set you up for failure. I'm going to let them see it. And when I let them see it, I don't want you to brag on it. I don't want you to, to, to go and, and make fun of them. I just want you to sit there and receive the blessing that God has for you. And, and when they ask you about it, you say, it's by the grace of God. I'm not any better than anybody else, but it's only by the grace of God. God said, I'll bless you publicly and openly. I'll let the world know because you did not seek notoriety from man because you not, did not seek to be patted on your back or uh, to mom and daddy to get all the, the stuff that comes along with, with notoriety because you did not seek, it, seek that God says I will reward you openly. I'm going to bless you in front of everybody uh, whether they liked you or not. Woo! I hope that blessed somebody today. Because what I do know that there's some folk out there who, uh, who don't mean you and I well. There's some people out there who are, oh, at every opportunity they get, they get, they will speak negatively about you and, and try to, try to uh, tear up your reputation, do all this stuff. But God said, if you do it the right way, if you forgive, if you love them, if you keep your mouth shut, even when you hear that they're speaking negatively about you, God said, I will reward you openly. Why? Because you are a reflection of me. If you do it yourself, if you get publicity for yourself, God said you've already received a reward. I don't need to reward you. And what I've learned in my 45 short years of life, I've learned that God can reward me way better than I can reward myself. I'd rather receive an open reward from God than to brag on anything that I feel like I've been able to do. God said, listen, I don't want you man, woman, boy, girl of God. I don't want you to do things for show. I don't want you to put on so that, that people can pat you on the back. I don't want you to do that. I want whatever it is you do, I want it to be motivated because you love God and because you want God to get the glory and not you yourself. God bless you. Listen. If there's somebody here today, and as we close on this sermon today, as we encourage one another not to be crowd pleasers, if there's anybody here today 
who's never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. You don't, you don't get humility from yourself. You get it from God. Let me tell you how humility works. When you enter into a relationship with God, you see how wicked and how perverse, how messed up you are compared to Jesus Christ. When I look at God, I see I'm, 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 I'm no good. On my best day, I'm terrible. And the humility comes in by recognizing that outside of God's anointing, I'm absolutely nothing. God ever takes his anointing away, guess what? I have nothing to give. I have nothing to, nothing to offer the conversation. I have nothing to add to, to my marriage. Nothing to give on my job. I have nothing. Because it's only by God's grace. See, some folk worry about what you can't do. They talk about what you can't do. You know what I say? I, if Whatever I'm able to do, I'm only able to do it by the grace of God. If that's you today and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ so that you can be the man, woman, boy, girl that God is calling you to be, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Father God, I admit that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me while I was yet a sinner. And now I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. And I receive him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for giving me another opportunity to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it in your heart, the Bible says that you are saved. I encourage you now to go join a church family where you can learn to become more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, that was our first invitation. That was for salvation. There's somebody here today who wants to uh, rededicate your life. You're, you're already saved, but you know that you're living a lifestyle that is outside the will of God. You know that you're doing things you should not be doing, and you feel in your spirit, you feel a, a sense of discomfort. You feel it in your heart that something that you're doing is uncomfortable. And God has laying it on your heart. You need to rededicate yourself. If that's you today, you can do that. Just say, Lord, I surrender myself back to you to be the man, woman, boy, girl that you're calling me to be. If that's you today, you want to rededicate your life, we welcome you to do that here at First Baptist. Thirdly, there may be somebody here today who's looking for a church home and God has laid it on your heart to be a part of this church family. I would be honored to serve as your pastor. No, we don't have a, a perfect church. I'm not a perfect pastor. But we serve a perfect God. And because we serve a perfect God, God is the one who helps us to be everything that he wants us to be. If that's you today and want to be a part of this church family, just let us know. You can go to our website, www.fbcongresham, and fill out one of the membership cards, and somebody will be in contact with you this week. And we'll make sure that you are, are joined. Listen, even if you don't join this church, join a church somewhere where the Bible is taught and where you can learn to become more like Jesus Christ. And here's my fourth and final, final prayer. Listen, listen, there's somebody simply standing in the, in the need of prayer. And you say, preacher, I just need somebody to cover me in prayer because I'm going through some things right now. Let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We honor you for your word. We thank you for reminding us of how important it is to be humble and to serve you with a pure heart. Father, I pray for those who are listening to me today, whether they're listening in their beds, where they're listening, in the dining room, living room, bathroom, wherever they might be. Father, I pray that you change their lives, that you give them what they need in order to be who you're calling them to be in times like these. Father, I pray now that you give us the humility to change what we need to change. Help us to surrender our lives to you so that we can do your will in this earth. Father, I pray for those who are, who are in the hospital, those who are sick and shut in, those who are grieving. I thank you so much for Sister Mildred Reed and her strength. Thank you for the card that she sent to our church family, thanking us uh, for being with her during the passing of her dear daughter, Sister Cheryl Ward. I pray, Father, that you bless Sister Mildred Reed, Sister McCowan, and the entire family, that you comfort and strengthen them in the way that only you can. I pray uh, for Sister Clyde and May Hardeman that you would strengthen her right now. 
I pray for, for Sister Roberts right now. I pray that you would, would bless and keep her. Pray for all those who are going through, those who are sick and shut in, those who have lost loved ones, those who are hurting inside, those who are dealing with a the, with the breakup in their, their relationship, those who are struggling in their marriage, those who are struggling with their children, those who are struggling to make money right now. Father, I pray that you bless each and every one of them. Give us what we need so that we can be who you're calling us to be. We love you. I pray for Latanya Bachelor, Ms. Bachelor, Malcolm, and his family. I pray for Brother Ben and his family. I pray uh, for, for Brother Owens, Brother Collins, Brother Ronnie, uh, Brenton Hayes, Brother James Jones and his family. My family, I pray that you bless and keep us. Keep us safe from any hurt, harm, or danger, sickness, or disease. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. These are the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. 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 Let church say amen. 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 Uh, at this time, we're so grateful to have Sister uh, Barry and Sister Jerry Thornton who will lead us in a song. Let's give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sister Norton, of course, you know that's that's my song, Pass Me Not, Oh Gentle Savior. We thank God for that great hymn of the church, and I pray that you were able to uh, to feel the words, amen, uh, that God certainly is with us, and he's a constant presence in our lives. 
Uh, listen, don't, don't forget now, this Sunday, today is our Communion Sunday. Uh, so, of course, we're going to prepare for that. But before we do so, we're going to have our offering. We're always grateful for the opportunity to give. Gives us an opportunity to give back a portion of that which God has blessed us. Listen, as I say every Sunday, uh, listen, if you, if you want to give, you give. Uh, if you don't feel led to give, then please do not give. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And we want to make sure that you're giving in the right spirit uh, so that you can receive the blessing that God has in store for you. And sometimes your blessing in return may not be money, it may be peace of mind, it may just be the comfort of knowing that you're in the will of God. Uh, so listen, if you feel led, you can give. But there's several ways you can give here at First Baptist on Gresham. Uh, the first of which, of course, you can come by the church, directly come by the church. And mom and daddy do it just about every week. They come and put their money in the drop box. Uh, Someone will collect it and, and, of course, put that in, in the system. Uh, you can give through the drop box, come right to the church. Uh, secondly, you can give through the church's website. It's www.fbcongresham. Go to that giving tab and follow the prompts as you see there on the screen. Uh, thirdly, you can text to give. That texting number is 404-445-3324. Uh, you can give via text. Fourthly, you can give, of course, uh, using Cash App. Uh, cash uh, App tag is dollar sign, capital F, capital B, capital C, lowercase O-N, capital G, R-E-S-H-A-M-1. Make sure you put that at the end, FBC on Gresham 1. And, of course, you can give that way. And then fifth and finally, you can give through the app called Givelify. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh, if you have not already done so, download that app. Look for First Baptist Gresham Road. You'll see our church's logo as well as a picture of me on there. And you can give that way as well. Thank you so much for your giving. It's because of your generous giving we're able to continue to feed the hungry and be a blessing to our church family uh, as well as to the community. So thank you. I'm going to ask uh, that we pray over our gifts. Father, we thank you right now for these gifts that we're giving. We pray that you bless it. And that they be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Pray for those who, uh, who gave uh, today and those who wanted to give but who could not give. I pray, Father, that you meet the needs of all of those who are listening to the sound of my voice. That you bless them with the blessing they stand in need of. We give you the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say together, amen, amen. Thank you so very much for your generosity today. And we're grateful to God for you. Listen. Uh, as we prepare for our communion, what I want you to do is go get you some juice, uh, go, go, go get you some wine. Now, when I say get you some wine, get you a small cup of wine. Amen. Don't go get you no big old cup. Talking about you taking communion, you drunk, you can't even get the bread, get to the bread because you, you got drunk on the wine. Get you a small cup, small cup of wine, uh, some juice. Try to stay away from beer and all that other stuff. Get you some juice, some wine, and get you a cracker or a cookie or something so that we can take communion together. Amen? Amen. One of the two ordinances of the Baptist Church is baptism and, of course, the Holy Communion. So this time, Sister Jerry Thornton is going to come, and while she is singing, while she's singing, I want you to go and pick up, go get your things that you need for communion uh, so that we can have communion together. God bless you. Enjoy.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jerry Thornton. There is power in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, of course, we have our Holy Communion now. I'm going to ask that we have a word of prayer real quick. We'll get right into our communion. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to, to serve and to partake in communion, uh, remembering that you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us while we were yet sinners. And today we remember his sacrifice, and we appreciate the love that you have for each and every one of us. And as we take this communion, I pray that you help us to clear our minds and our hearts so that we can receive your communion and remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. So I'll say together, amen, amen, amen. If you have a bread, if you have some bread, if you have a cracker, uh, listen, this bread is a symbol of Jesus' body that was battered and bruised on Calvary. He said, as often as you eat this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Church of the living God, let us all eat together. Amen. 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 The juice uh, is a symbol of Jesus' blood that was shed on Calvary. And we know that had it not been for the shedding of blood, that there would be no remission of sins. As Sister Thornton just saying, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it as often as you eat this bread and take this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Church of the living God, let us all drink together. Amen. Let the church say amen. Thank you all so very much. Thank you for joining us here today at First Baptist on Gresham. Thank you, uh, Sister Mia Moore and Javon, the whole family. Thank you all so much. And everybody who is watching along with us today, thank you all so very much for tuning in to us here at First Baptist on Gresham. Please continue to be safe. Uh, please continue to social distance yourself. Uh, don't go out unless you need to go out. Remember, this virus has not gone to sleep, even though some of us may have let down our guards a little bit. Uh, this virus is, uh, is resurfacing and uh, resurfacing in a strong way. So please make sure that you continue to be safe. Please also uh, pray for the sister family, uh, the family of Sister uh, Catherine Robinson, that, you sh that God will strengthen them, bless and keep them as well. And thank you again. Uh, to Sister Mildred Reed, who sent us a beautiful card uh, to remember her beautiful daughter, Sister Cheryl Ward. And she just wanted to thank our church family for, uh, for their prayers and support during their time of grief. And let's continue to keep Sister Mildred Reed and the family lifted in our prayers as well. But listen, again, thank you so very much. Let's have our benediction. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. And now I pray that you help us not just to be hearers of your word, but to be doers also. And now may the love of God our Father the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you and have a wonderful week.